Hello everyone, today we are in my hometown Kuching and I have just received the new Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra 5G and today we're planning to share with you our first impressions of this amazing camera unit. So here's the camera. Samsung has gone to town with the cameras on this phone. The main unit has a 108 megapixel sensor and when using the telephoto lens it uses a 48 megapixel sensor that does 100x space zoom. The front facing camera here has a 40 megapixel sensor. So let us know in the comment section below what you think of the quality here. Hi, it's Jeremy from the edit. The Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra 5G has a really, really handy feature that lets you switch between the front-facing camera and the rear-facing camera seamlessly while still recording videos, which is great for vloggers. But as you can see, when I was switching from the rear-facing camera back to the front-facing camera, the autofocus had some difficulty reacquiring my face. But Samsung has now fixed it in their latest software update. And now, back to our video. Its front-facing camera, which is the one we're using right here, has a whopping 40 megapixel sensor. Now, Samsung also says the new camera can shoot up to 8K video, and it can even shoot super, super steady video without the need of using a stabilizer. So in essence, these are serious specs, and we're gonna be putting it through its paces by taking pictures and videos during the day and night, and taking you, the viewers, around my beautiful hometown, Kuching. So let's go. Now the word kuching in the Malay language sounds like the word for cat and therefore you'll be seeing a lot of cat statues around here. And if you ever wanted to visit Kuching, we are on the largest island in Asia. And we're about an hour's flight away from Singapore. Welcome to the Kuching waterfront and we'll start with some street photography using the 108 megapixel camera. When shooting with the main 108 megapixel camera, the Samsung S20 Ultra lets you choose whether to shoot it in the full 108 megapixel mode, which gives you an ultra high resolution photo. Or you can use what they call Nona Bidding, which combines every 9 pixel on the 108 megapixel sensor into one larger pixel, effectively turning it into a 12 megapixel sensor. So when we compare these two images here and when we zoom in, you will notice that the 108 megapixel photo retains a lot more detail. But on a cloudy day like this, using Nona binning to combine the smaller pixels into a larger pixel area allows the camera sensor to receive more light. This creates a brighter image that is more evenly exposed, especially during low light situations. Now having said that, you could even argue that with all the details preserved in the 108 megapixel photo, you would have a better chance of processing it under Adobe Lightroom to bring out the highlights. And this is the photo we edited in Lightroom with some simple tweaks. But keep in mind that that too becomes an additional process to your workflow. And here are a couple more comparisons that we have prepared. That last photo here is a photo of a very popular cafe in Kuching. It's called the Feast and Furious Cafe. And you can sort of see where they got the inspiration to name the cafe. And like what the name of the cafe suggests, prepare yourself for a furious feast. 
They've got lots of local dishes on offer, but my favourite has got to be the Sarawak Laksa. And you should be able to read the words Sarawak Laksa from the menu on the wall on the 108 megapixel photo. The owner is a dear friend of ours, a proper petrol head, and he's also an Android user. Now, as first impression goes, I think the 12 megapixel Nona beating mode produces the better image under various difficult lighting situations. And you'll notice that during low light situations, both the 108 megapixel and the 12 megapixel photo retain just about the same amount of detail. And unless you really need to capture all that detail in your photo, perhaps to produce high quality prints, then the 108 megapixel is the way to go. But do keep in mind that with high resolution photos comes a high demand on storage space. And so if you're planning to shoot everything in high resolution, just make sure you carry around some memory cards. Because those 108 megapixel photos, they have an average of 20 megabytes per file. Now speaking of high resolution, let's check out the 8K videos. here is that while we uploaded this video in 8K, there's probably not a lot of places where you can truly appreciate the 8K playback of this segment. And that's because 8K TVs are just entering the market space. And 8K content is even rarer. Shooting one minute of an 8K video will take up 600 megabytes of your valuable storage. And if you wanted to watch a 10 minute 8K film, you'll have to download 6 gigabytes worth of footage. Imagine what that would do to your data plan. But that doesn't stop Samsung from packing this feature into their Galaxy S20 Ultra. And Samsung claims that given the high resolution of an 8K video, a video editor like myself would find it very useful, as it allows us to crop into videos without losing resolution. Now by cropping into a video, you can give your audience a close-up shot of the subject. But if you crop in too much, you'll start to lose details in your footage. Now with 8K video, you should be able to crop in a little bit more without losing video quality when compared to the 4K footage. And that gives the video editor the versatility to create either a close-up shot or a wide-angle shot without needing to swap camera lenses. Here we have two still images from an 8K and a 4K video. And as we crop in, you'll notice that on the 4K still image, we are starting to lose details on the tiles of the fountain. And if we crop in once more, the details on the 4Ks are completely lost. So yes, Having 8K footage is somewhat helpful to a video editor. But for normal usage, it's going to be very hard for anyone to spot the difference. Now Samsung also claims that a photographer could also benefit from the high resolution of the 8K video. And that's because Samsung says that a still image from an 8K video has about the same quality as a 33 megapixel photo. But instead of a 33 megapixel photo, let's compare it to a 12 megapixel photo shot from the same camera. For the wide shots, both photos are quite similar. But as we take a closer look, the 12 megapixel photo maintains a slightly sharper image and you can almost see the thin spire on top of the cat museum. The results are also quite similar here. Now turning an 8K still image into a photo has its benefits, but I wouldn't go as far as calling it a 33 megapixel quality photo. Now, let's talk about the 100X Space Zoom. This is the Cat Museum shot at 100 times zoom. And we shot this picture from 3.6 kilometers away. And while I think it's pretty impressive for a smartphone in its tiny smartphone body to be able to take a photo from so far back, I just don't think this picture quality is very good. But at 30x, you might pass it off as a decent photo. And both these photos are shot using digital zoom. Optical zoom, on the other hand, only gets up to 10x. And this is how far away we were standing. I think at 10x, the picture quality is pretty impressive, but let's check out one more example. I think the 
picture at 10x definitely hits the sweet spot in this example. But let us know what you think about the picture quality in the comment section below. Now with video recording, the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra will let you zoom from 0.5x on the ultra wide angle lens all the way through to 20x on the telephoto lens. And this zoom effect is actually achieved through some very clever software. And that's because on the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra, you can't really change the focal length like how you would on a traditional camera, which is done by simply moving the optical lens further away from the camera sensor to zoom in and then closer to the camera sensor to zoom out. And if all the smartphone manufacturers had done that, then we would probably end up with silly looking phones like this. But thank goodness, that is not the case. The clever people at Samsung decided to stick three different cameras at three different focal lengths and then they used a little digital zoom to crop into the image so it seems like we're getting closer and this is done until it reaches 1x where the next camera takes over. Digital zoom from 0.5x to 1x may be imperceptible but from 1x to 4x you're really stretching that 4k resolution and what you'll get is a huge drop in video quality and a lot of over sharpening just before we engage the 4x periscope lens. And in case if you didn't catch that, here's an instant replay. This is the last frame before reaching 4 times magnification. And you'll notice that the leaves and branches are all over sharpened, which is probably caused by pushing the digital zoom to its limits. And this is the frame that came after. And in this picture, you'll notice that the fine details are back, everything is crisp and sharp, and that's because we're back on optical zoom. So if you're gonna get the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra for the zoom features, just be aware that for pictures, optical zoom stops at 10x. The hybrid zoom system that helps keep the phone nice and thin is still not as good as optical zoom. But as long as you stay within the magnification strength of each camera, you should be able to produce some decent quality videos from a distance. Enhance. 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 The super steady feature on the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra is probably my favourite feature to use. It lets you shoot super steady videos without using a stabiliser, just like the GoPro Hero 8. And here we're comparing the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra against the Sony RX100 Mark 7. Stabilisation test number something. Oh, we don't know. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Clearly, the winner here is the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra, but it does come at a price, and that is, you can only shoot 1080 instead of 4K videos. And that means the footage gets very noisy during low light situations. So, if you're filming videos at night, try and avoid using Super Steady as it will automatically turn all your 4K videos into 1080 resolution. I wish I had known about this earlier because I shot almost everything with Super Steady turned on. The Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra is now using the same software magic as the Google Pixel to get better low light performance from their camera. And this low light image processing software is making it so easy for all of us to do night photography even in challenging situations like this. And this is with night mode. And I still can't believe that's all done through software and machine learning. So as first impression goes, I think the night mode does a really good job. And it's pretty much on par with what Samsung's competitors are offering. Hello internet. Now, the word ultra, according to the dictionary, means going beyond due limits. And in this video, you can sort of see that Samsung is really pushing beyond the limits of a smartphone camera through the introduction of a 108 megapixel camera 
and the 100x space zoom. Look, as a tech geek, we really appreciate that Samsung is always willing to try out new technology, but they don't always get it right the first time out. So while the 108 megapixel camera and the 100x space zoom may be pushing boundaries, they are plagued with intermittent autofocusing issues. And all of that makes up for an ownership experience that's a little bit unfinished, especially for the price that they're asking. So, of all the camera features that we've looked at today, I can definitely see myself using the super steady function the most. But there's a little bit more unfinished business here. Come on Samsung, why is it only available in 1080 resolution? The GoPro Hero 8 Black comes with stabilized videos at 4K at 60 frames. I'm just saying. So, if you're looking for the latest camera technology in a smartphone, the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra has some of the best camera features right now but it does feel a bit rough around the edges. And if you feel the same way as I do, maybe check out the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra's little brother, the Samsung Galaxy S20 and S20 Plus. And maybe you could save yourself a couple of hundred bucks in the process. Hello everyone, we hope you are well and staying safe during these uncertain times. Please share with us what you think of the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra in the comment section below. And if you have liked this video, please click that like button to show your support and so that we can continue to make more videos like this please consider subscribing thank you for watching we also hope you've enjoyed that little tour around my hometown kuching stay safe and we'll see you in the next one bye <laughs>